For the past few weeks, I've been trying out eight phones priced between £70 and £379 to see what you can get for your money. All of these phones are Android phones. The cheapest iPhone costs more than any of these, but we have got contenders from Nokia, TCL, Xiaomi. Honestly, it's been like a phone shop in here as I work out what these phones can do and what, if anything, you miss out on. First, I wanted to test their performance. Generally speaking, the cheapest smartphones don't have the latest and greatest chips inside them to keep costs down. So I did some basic tasks on all of them. All of these phones were able to do these tasks, no problems at all. Even the cheapest one, the Nokia 1.3, although this particular phone was noticeably sluggish. And that made it quite frustrating to use. And I feel like that's falling at the first hurdle. And it doesn't have to be like that because for £10 more, the Alcatel phone was buttery smooth. To push the phones a bit more, I played the hits game Among Us and it wouldn't open at all on the Nokia 1.3, but here it is running on the Alcatel One S, absolutely no problem. The next challenge was to see if I could play Fortnite, which is a much more demanding game with 100 players online and 3D graphics. And the two cheapest phones straight up wouldn't even install it, they don't have enough memory. But it ran just fine on all the other phones, even the ones that the app warned weren't officially supported. And here I am getting a victory royale on the TCL 10L. I did one more test, this time with some cloud gaming on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And most of the heavy lifting there is done by the remote computer server, but this was pushing the three cheapest phones beyond their limits. The games just stuttered too much to be playable, but it works beautifully on all the others, both with the touchscreen or with the Xbox controller connected. Here's the report card, and it shows you don't have to go for a top-end phone for console quality gaming. Let's take a look at the cameras. That's an area that the premium brands focus a lot of attention on. In a cheap phone, I think if this was my mum's phone and the only way for her to send me pictures or video call me, especially right now, would I be happy with the picture quality? That's my measure of whether these phones take good photos. Well, the pictures on the cheap Nokia 1.3 were fairly poor. I don't think anyone's buying this for the camera. The rest of the phones all took what I would say are satisfactory shots that pass my mum test, with the TCL one here probably being my favourite. That shot was taken in broad daylight. What about a low light shot? I took some of those as well. These were all varying degrees of okay. Not mind blowing, but not disappointing. They all managed to take a clear and fairly bright photo, which I don't think you'd have been able to do on a super cheap phone 10 years ago. Of course, the front-facing camera has never been more important with all those video calls we're doing. As with the other shots, the cheapest phone took a fairly low-resolution selfie, and the Alcatel one was slightly better. And the rest of the phones took nice, sharp selfies. Let's talk about features. What do you lose to keep the costs down? The two cheapest phones don't have NFC for contactless payments. None of the phones have wireless charging, although some of them do have fast charging, so you can top up your battery quickly. Sometimes paying a bit extra gets you a newer technology or something a bit fancier. So the two most expensive phones can connect to the new 5G phone networks. And while all but one of the phones had a fingerprint reader, the Samsung and OnePlus phones had it embedded in the screen, which is a bit more fancy. I want to touch on software updates because buying a cheap phone shouldn't come at the expense of your security. So I asked all these companies how long they intend to provide security updates for these devices. So what conclusions can I draw from this? Well, if this is going to be somebody's only phone for taking family pictures or staying in touch with video calling, then I would say it's probably worth leaning towards the more expensive end of this scale just for that better camera. But if you want something really basic for sending emails or messages and browsing the web, the Alcatel 1S proves you can do this for under £100.